Hey guys, welcome back to WeRC. Today we're working on our Traxxas slash VXL 4x4 Fox Edition truck. The motor bearings are out on it, so we're going to put the Traxxas 3352R rebuild kit on it. This is the rebuild kit for both the uh, Valenian 3500 and the Valenian 540XL motor. So we're going to show you how to do that rebuild, so let's get to it. Alright, so the first thing we're going to do is take off the gearbox cover. We're also going to take off the little clip here that holds the motor wires down. And you can see here that our spur gear is stripped out, but we have uh, already replaced this once. The reason that the spur gear is stripped out, come to find out, is because the bearings on the motor are burnt out. Uh, there, can't see it too much right now, but when the motor gets hot especially, there's a lot of play in the main shaft here. So we're gonna pull the motor mount off and pull the motor out so to do that on the Traxxas Slash this is not the ultimate so this is the standard chassis we have to take out the four screws that hold the rear end on because we have one screw coming into our motor mount right here that we have to get to from underneath so we'll pull these two out here there's two underneath as well the same same screws and once we get those four loose that rear end will just slide right off and you can see shavings of our spur gear in there we'll take the slipper clutch assembly out because we're gonna have to replace that spur gear again anyhow These are the other two, there's three motor mount screws. There's two on the top and one in the bottom. The center drive shaft trying to come out with it so it's being a little bit difficult, there it goes. Okay, we got that out. That'll get us access to the third screw. Now our motor mount should be loose. We can wiggle this. I need to pry up on it slightly. All right. And now we can take our last screw out that holds the motor in we had the top one loose already we'll take the top one out as well as the bottom one here now this one doesn't have to come all the way out because it's slotted on the motor the top one does have to come all the way out and be careful when you take that screw out that you don't lose the nut that is in the top of the motor mount then the last thing we need to do is disconnect our motor wires and we've got the motor loose. So we have the motor out. We're gonna be installing the Traxxas Rebuild Kit 3352R. So the first thing we do is take the pinion gear off. Next we'll take the plate off 
the motor. You want to pay attention to the orientation of that plate in relation to the wires. So the slot is, we'll call it closest to the wires, the notch is away from the wires. Set that aside. Next we're going to take the back cap off. You may need to get a screwdriver, but it, it should just pop off. You'll need to save that. Then we have three four, I apologize, small screws that hold the back cover of the motor on. You do get new screws with the new kit, so you can save those or discard those. It's up to you. Once those four screws are out, Again, you'll probably need to pry this back cover or back cap off using a small straight screwdriver. All right, now you do get a new back cover and new bearings in the kit. At this point, make sure you note where this brass sleeve goes. That's the part that guys leave out the most, is that brass sleeve. So we'll pull that out. You do get a new brass sleeve in the kit. And if you gently push down on that, now remember this is magnetic holding that in. So you have to fight the magnets. Let me get a different wrench. You'll fight the magnets pulling that out. All right, and here you see our problem. Our front bearing completely came apart in the housing. So we'll get this off the shaft. All of these used to be parts of the bearing. Then we'll take a screwdriver and push that, what's left of that bearing in. Now we're gonna have to try and blow this out because unfortunately Many of the balls, uh, you can just barely see them here, but the little balls of the bearing even came apart inside the motor there. So you'll want to make sure you get all of those out. So we'll get this cleaned up. Um, you may want to use some compressed air, but if you do use something like this that's for computers we don't want to get a bunch of moisture in there so we'll blow this out and we'll get the new bearings ready and get them put back in right, guys we uh, we did get that bearing out finally we're going to take a little bit of uh, rubbing alcohol isopropyl alcohol and just clean out the center of this motor get any of the black dust off of there since we've got it open when we already cleaned the center magnet part. See, we're getting quite a bit out of there. We're just using a Q-tip, obviously. Get that nice and clean. Then we also need to pull the other bearing out of the back cover. Actually, we don't because it comes with a new back cover. So we'll go ahead and get the new parts out. Keep those together. Just a couple more notes, guys. We did make sure, and you can't see them all here, but our bearing on the front of the motor came apart. So we wanted to make sure that we got all of the balls out of the motor. There's nine balls in that bearing. So we were able to get those out. Now one other thing is, you'll see that the kit comes with these real thin, these are actually spacers. And uh, the original motor setup had one spacer. I'm gonna show you where that goes. So we're ready to put this back together. 
the spacer, put that on the front shaft first and then put one of the new bearings in there. And then this is the easiest way to get that in is just feed the motor up over it. And remember that is magnetic. So it's gonna suck up in there. And then we do still need to make sure that that front bearing is all the way set. So it usually doesn't take much force. And then what I like to do is pull this back out and make sure that that bearing is fully set. If it didn't set, then you can take a deep well socket and lightly tap it in. Ours didn't set, so we'll have to get that. All right, so we're going to actually use a socket extension. We don't want to tap this very hard. There we go. I know you can't see in there very well, guys, but it is, yeah, you won't be able to see it, but it is fully seated. You can see that it's fully seated on the front end as well. So now we'll put the center portion of our motor back in, make sure our spacer's still on there. And that should suck right up in there. All right. Now remember that brass sleeve that we talked about. That's the piece most guys forget. The new kit does come with one. That goes right on here on the back end of the motor. Then we have our new back cover and we'll put our other second new bearing in the back cover. So there we're set with that and we're ready to put the back cover on. And we'll go ahead and use our four new screws since they've got nice fresh Loctite on them. All right, we'll get this finished up and we'll get the back cap put back on and get this motor ready to reinstall. We've got the motor back together, the back cap on, the plate back on, the pinion back on. So now we're ready to get it put back in the truck. All right, so we'll put our motor back on our motor mount. Tighten up the bottom screw. almost all the way tight. That motor still needs to be able to rotate. We'll put our top screw in. And again, we won't tighten this all the way. We'll save it for our final adjustment once we made it up to the spur gear. All right. Put the motor mount back in the truck. So that's our three screws. We got two from the top, one from the bottom. The two from the top are longer. The one from the bottom is a shorter one. We did also go ahead and replace our spur gear. We have another video showing how to do that, so we didn't show that in this video. We'll put the link to that video in the description. Go ahead and get our third screw. All right, now we'll put our slipper clutch and spur gear assembly back in. We're ready to put the rear end of the truck on. Now underneath this, the only thing you have to pay attention to is that you get the housing underneath that lip. 
And then what you usually have to do is just roll this forward or backward just a little bit to get it to engage the rest of the way. And now we'll put our four long screws back in, two in the top, two in the bottom. If you're using a drill like this, I know I say it in all the videos, but don't over tighten those with the drill. Finish them off by hand. We're going to need to adjust our pinion out just a little bit. We, we want it to engage right in the center of the spur gear. It's a little too far forward. Spur gear. And this is a good uh, judge on if you have your motor adjusted to, uh, right against your spur gear, you should be able to slide the pinion forward and back. Uh, between the teeth of the spur gear. If it's too tight, too much friction that you can't rotate it, uh, slide it, I'm sorry, in and out off the spur gear, then your motor's too tight against your spur gear. But see, we have this, the pinion centered on the spur gear now. We've got the motor, we did adjust that previously. Let's just double check that that is tight, it is. Ready to put the gearbox cover on. And then the last thing we have is our motor wire tie down and we will test this out. There's the gearbox cover screw, there's our motor wire tie down or strap. It's a little tight down in there. that positioned, get our last screw in, alright guys we should have it, we'll throw a battery in real quick, turn our remote on, All right, working great. Well guys, hopefully this video was helpful for you. If you're rebuilding your Valenian 3500 or 540 XL motor, this of course, the 540 XL is the same motor that's in the Traxxas Haas as well as the Traxxas Max. And the 3500 is in several trucks such as the Slash and the Wrestler. Again, if you found this video helpful, please subscribe to the channel. Stay tuned for more great content. Thanks for watching, and that's how we are safe.